Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. A security vulnerability is exploited in the Beaumont Health Vaccine Appointment System. What we're learning this noon. Plus, COVID crisis, a dire new warning on the new fast-spreading strains of the coronavirus. Why we could be seeing a serious spring surge. But first, it is a big day for local restaurants. They can reopen for indoor dining, but there will be some changes. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Karen Drew. Those changes top our news here at noon. This morning, Governor Whitmer discussed the reopening effort. Here is what she had to say. It's not the restaurant industry's fault that they are the place where this virus can spread fast, but that is in fact the case. And that's why we've been trying to get Congress to give us more support so that we can help these struggling businesses. What we did in November, when lots of states were seeing their numbers rise so quickly, we did a strategic, targeted, and temporary pause is what we called it. And this pause meant that Michigan's numbers dropped precipitously. We are now 46th highest when it comes to positivity rates. That's phenomenal compared to where we were in November. We're sixth highest when it comes to getting vaccines into arms. And because of the strong position that we're in, we can take this small step forward in this industry that struggled so much. All right, so let's send it out to Sean Lay, who is live this afternoon with a closer look at how businesses are preparing for the big reopen and some of the challenges they still face, Sean. Big challenges, but so much excitement. You can feel the buzz right here in this restaurant, Lily Seafood, right here on Washington in Royal Oak. You've got staff here working, excited to be here. The doors just opened at noon. Right away, one customer came in wanting to come in. Uh, restaurants, as you know, Listen, trying to hold on and be so creative, but today truly is a big day. One block of Washington Avenue in Royal Oak shows you just how restaurant owners have worked to try just about everything to stay afloat during the state's COVID-19 shutdown. Tents, outdoor dining, greenhouse dining, creative ways to try to stay in business. But today, the state is allowing restaurants to reopen only if they follow strict rules the state believes will help limit the spread of COVID-19. Liz Morton runs Lily Seafood in Royal Oak. Now at noon, they are are open for limited indoor dining. We're so excited. The employees are excited. Uh, phone's ringing off the hook. Everyone's excited to come in. Starting right now, restaurants can open at just 25% capacity. They have to close at 10 tonight, which will put a dent in restaurants that rely on alcohol sales. No more than six customers per table. Tables must be at least six feet apart. Morton says even with the restrictions, it's worth opening today. There's a huge demand. People even when it's very cold out, and we just had the tent with only two sides on it, people would sit out there because they just wanted to get out of the house and sit down and, and have a change of scenery. Back here live, listen, Lily's open. I, I said at noon today already three customers walking in wanting to come in for the indoor dining. All spaced out here uh, in the bar area, really no congregating at the bar. You have to be served drinks at the table. So they're following all the protocols, of course, saying it is worth it for that 25% capacity. And it was worth hanging on. All the creative measures they used here, all the restaurants, Karen, with the igloos and the tents and everything, all worth it to get to this date. Also, we just did an interview with the uh, restaurant association head. He says today is a big day. They're hoping it means they can go up from 25% to 50% and so on if everything works out just the way they're hoping to. Back to you. Some very happy people this afternoon, that is right. All right, thank you, Sean. Let's turn our attention to another reopening plan. The Detroit Public Schools Community District will begin transitioning back to in-person learning by reopening its learning centers on February 24th. Now, however, the decision is contingent on the city's positive infection rate remaining at the current level of 5% or less. After the learning centers are reopened, the district will continue to monitor the city's infection rate and wait until it falls solidly below the 5% threshold to resume full in-person learning. Also making headlines this noon, President Biden will meet with 10 Republican senators today as he decides whether to slim his coronavirus relief proposal to win GOP votes or forge ahead with only Democrats. The GOP senators are proposing $1,000 stimulus checks as part of their COVID relief counteroffer. 
down from the Biden-backed $1,400 checks. The Republican plan provides $160 billion for vaccines and $132 billion for a smaller unemployment benefit. Now, in total, the proposed package is estimated to cost $618 billion, which is about one-third the size of Biden's $1.9 trillion proposal. We'll keep you updated on those talks. Now to the coronavirus numbers. Here at home, we are expected to get the latest numbers in just a couple of hours. Nationwide, the United States passed 26,189,000 coronavirus cases and more than 441,000 people have died nationally from the virus. Now, this is according to the Johns Hopkins University database. Meantime, reports of new cases have dropped by more than a third in recent weeks. But as Gabe Gutierrez reports, the rise of new variants are giving scientists cause for concern. A race against time to vaccinate more Americans as new and highly contagious COVID-19 variants spread nationwide. We are going to see something like we have not seen yet in this country. That hurricane's coming. The third case of that South African strain first detected in South Carolina was found in Maryland over the weekend. Officials confirmed the patient in Baltimore had no history of international travel and likely contracted the virus through community spread. Two other variants from the UK and Brazil have already been detected in the US, with more than 460 cases of the potentially more deadly UK strain spreading across 32 states. The fact is that the surge that is likely to occur with this new variant from England is going to happen in the next 6 to 14 weeks. Though the number of U.S. COVID cases is now on the decline again, a dire new projection by researchers at the University of Washington shows that rapid variant spread could lead to a spring spike of about 200,000 more deaths by May. Underscoring the need for speed as much of the nation still waits for the first dose of the vaccine. All 50 states are reporting shortages. Some local officials now want to stop reserving second doses and vaccinate more people with one dose immediately. The central story of the vaccination effort nationwide has been lack of supply. Today, Boston's iconic Fenway Park is opening up as the state's second largest mass vaccination site. Shots for up to 500 people a day. I just want to do my part to stop the spread. Now the CDC is doubling down on masks, issuing a new order that will make face coverings mandatory on all public transportation, including planes, trains, buses and ride shares, starting tonight. I'm sure there are people that will disagree and make it controversial, but I don't think it necessarily should be. I think it's showing good results, and I think having it mandated is kind of a good, good step in the right direction. That was Gabe Gutierrez reporting. Meantime, the transition from the Trump to the Biden administration has brought some significant changes to the U.S. COVID-19 strategy, like thrice weekly virtual press briefings on the pandemic. Today, the task force held one of those briefings. Dr. Fauci talked about the vaccines and their potential with the new variants. But we do know that antigenic variation does have clinical consequences. Because when you looked at the South African isolates, namely the 351, that one had a multifold diminution in the efficacy of antibodies induced by various vaccines that are in use now. But it was still within the cushion level of providing some protection. Now, experts are particularly alarmed by the South Africa variant because of its potential to actually escape protection from the current vaccines, meaning vaccines might not stop people from getting infected with COVID-19. Dr. Fauci did address the good news, however, by reiterating that the vaccines do provide some level of protection from serious illness and death. Here at home, a security vulnerability is exploited in the Beaumont Health vaccine appointment system. And as Nick Monticelli reports, some people were actually able to jump the line. Good afternoon, a serious flaw with the system here. I wouldn't consider this a hack though. It's not like somebody deliberately broke into the system. They just kind of found a flaw or a loophole in it. So the tricky part though, is that when all this was happening, about 3,000 people legitimately thought that they got a vaccination appointment. Beaumont Health's IT team was working overtime this weekend, fending off somebody who found a back door into the vaccine registration system and then sharing it publicly for all to use. But those using it likely did not know it was unauthorized. About 2,700 people thought they legitimately scored a vaccination appointment. Now all of those appointments have been canceled. In a statement, a senior VP at Beaumont said, 
These appointments violate the ethical distribution framework Beaumont created based upon the state of Michigan's mandatory vaccine guidelines. We regret 2,700 people in our community became victims of this unfortunate incident. Beaumont also adds this did not compromise anybody's personal medical records. It simply allowed people to cut in line for vaccine appointments. The hospital also let the company who runs this software know so this doesn't happen to other hospitals. Now, what's really important here is that Beaumont says the current vaccination appointments are not affected at all. So if you had one, you're still good to go. I'm Nick Monticelli, Local 4. Turning our attention to the weather as we take a live look outside through our sky cam. What are we expecting for the rest of our afternoon, Brandon? It is snowy for some. There are some that aren't seeing a single flake of flying, but east siders have been seeing snow here for the last couple of hours. And here's a look at four live radar. It's snow that is coming at us from an unusual direction, usually west to east on the weather. This is coming east to west and through Mount Clemens, through Wayne County and down into parts of Lenaway and Monroe counties in addition to Washtenaw County, but it is uh, again a different direction and colder winds to boot. So Karen coming up, we do have a couple of warmer days, but a storm that will then bring the chill back all of it ahead. All right, coming up, a democratically elected leader in jail after the opposition claims fraud in a recent election. What we're learning about the coup in Myanmar.